I'm Byron Kirby. When we talk about grounding or bonding, those terms are a bit confusing because that doesn't exactly describe what we're trying to do. We're trying to make an electrical circuit safe, and the only way to make it safe is to make it turn off in the event of an overload, a ground fault, or a short circuit. The breaker needs to see enough amperage to open the circuit during one of these events. The National Electrical Code sets the standard for how we do that. It defines grounding as connecting to the earth or to a conductive body that extends the ground connection. It defines bonding as connecting to establish electrical continuity and conductivity. Article 250 of the National Electrical Code covers these topics, the system grounding and bonding of equipment. 254A1 says electrical systems that are grounded shall be connected to the earth in a manner that will limit the voltage imposed by lightning, line surges, or unintentional contact with higher voltage lines, and that will stabilize the voltage to earth during normal operation. Notice that none of those include fault protection. The reason that we ground an electrical system has nothing to do with fault protection or opening that breaker. 4A3 says, normally non-current carrying conductive materials enclosing electrical conductors or equipment or forming part of such equipment shall be connected together and to the electrical supply source in a manner that establishes an effective ground fault current path. This is the way we open the breaker. We establish that effective ground fault current path so that in the event of a fault, the current can increase across the breaker. It will open and, and clear the fault or make the circuit safe. A5 makes it very clear the earth shall not be considered an effective ground fault current path. So to summarize what the code says, we take the parts of the electrical system, the source, the meter, the disconnect, the panel, the load itself, and we tie all those together in such a way to establish that effective ground fault current path. Then we take those things that are underground, the ground rod, the anchor bolts, the uh, rebar in the, in the footing, metal water pipe, underground well casings or tanks, anything like that that's available, and we tie all those together to establish that ground connection. And then we connect it to the electrical service at one point and one point only. Here's what happens when we try to use the, the earth as an effective ground fault current path. Here we have a meter base and a disconnect. We have a uh, ground rod just below that meter base that's driven eight feet into the ground with a number four copper going to that ground rod. We're going to take that copper number four loose and we're going to put a piece of THHN stranded conductor on the ground rod. At the other end, we're going to land it on a breaker and energize that breaker and see what happens. Now when we energize it, if it was an effective ground fault current path, the breaker would trip. But instead, the current goes to 0.98 amps and holds. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't trip the breaker. If we do a little Ohm's law, we know amps times ohms equals volts. So at 120 volts, that 0.98 amps, we had a 122 ohm connection with the ground rod to the earth. The, earth, the ground rod itself had 122 ohms of resistance to earth. And so the current only reached 0.98 amps and it would not clear fault. 0.98 amps is enough to kill someone, but it's not enough to trip the breaker. If we had a 25 ohm connection, which would be the code standard, then that 120 volt circuit would show 4.8 amps, still not enough to clear the breaker, trip the breaker, or clear the fault. So a very dangerous situation when we try to use the earth as a path of ground fault current.
So in summary, bonding establishes the effective ground fault current path, and that has to be through a conductor. We can't use the earth as that ground fault current path. And grounding stabilizes the voltage from outside sources. This is Byron Kirby. Thanks for watching.